Okay, so how many bags of 4% mixed with 7 bags of 20% to produce a mix that's 11%? So how do we do the uh, mixture problems? Got the buckets, right, or the beakers, or whatever you want to call them. Okay. Now, uh, the percentages go on the bottom, don't they? So we got the 4%, the 20%, and the 11%. That good? Remember how you can always tell that the mid-level goes on the end because something stronger and weaker produce something in between them. Did those sentences make sense? Let me say them again. Well, let me just ask you this. Of those three percentages, 4%, 20%, 11%, just look at the percentages. Don't worry about the seven bags right now. Which one of those is the highest percentage? 20. 20. It's the strongest mix. Which one of those is the weakest percentage? The 4%. So which one of those is mid-level? The 11%. The mid-level always goes on the end because it's the mix of the stronger and the weaker. So it's in between. Does that make sense? They're going to throw you a curveball on the practice exam. Please practice exam me, right? So on the, they're going to throw you a curveball, and there may be one on the real exam tomorrow. I don't even remember. So I, I don't want you to be thrown off by that curveball, though. Remember... They're going to try to mix around the way they say the percentages, but you don't even need to read the words. Just look at the three percentages, <coughs> find the highest, the lowest, and grab the mid-level and put that one at the end. The mid-level has to go at the end. Does that make sense on that? Right? Are you guys tracking with me? 11% is in between 20 and 4, and that has to be the one in the final bucket. Why? Because the stronger and the weaker mix to produce the final thing that's in between them. Got to be. They're going to try to trick you on that in the practice exam. So make sure you're aware of that. All right. Now, where's the seven go? Well, exactly where it says. Seven bags of 20%, huh? So it goes there. Now, that's the different part. That's the weird part. That's the curveball on this one. Is that's weird. We're not used to the number going in the middle like that. We're used to it going over here on the end, huh? But that's okay. It's just really no big deal. Just put your X here and your Y here. You know, you just do everything regular, it'll be fine, actually. So they really can put that number in other places. I know, well, I don't think we saw any of those in the homework, did we? I just said, hey, they could put the number in other places, but that's different than experiencing it. So I want you to experience it before you get to the real test. So you see, they can put it there, but you just put the X and the Y in the blanks. doesn't really matter. Let's, let's just keep on going with the normal stuff. Equation number one, <clears throat> how do we get, we got get, we got two letters, right? So we need to get two equations. How do we get the first equation on a mixture problem? Right across the top, right. Right across the tops. X plus 7 is Y. And then how do you get the second equation in a mixture problem? Multiply, yeah. Multiply, so top times bottom, top times bottom, top times bottom, right? So that'd be 4X and 20 times 7 and 11 times Y. Don't even need to change those to decimals, do I? Right? If I, I could make that 0 0.04, 0 0.20, 0 0.11, but then I could just multiply through by 100, 100, 100, 100, move them all back. So why bother? Just skip the whole thing since you could just turn around and get rid of them anyway. Well, let's just skip it. So is that good so far? Remember the setup on that? So top, 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 and then multiply, 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 right? And this, this is what? 100, oops, I just erased it. Didn't mean to erase it. 140? So let's make that 140. Okay. So I've got two equations and two letters, so I need to solve those. And um, uh, you really don't have to rearrange them. I'm not going to rearrange them. Even though we're, we's used to having x's, y's on the left, all that really matters is they're, they're lined up with each other, and they are. X's are over x's, numbers are over numbers, and y's are over y's. It's good enough. Good enough. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? We're going to make the fronts become opposites, huh? Remember how we always do that on these solving two equations at the same time? Make the fronts be opposites. So let's multiply through by negative 4, negative 4, negative 4. So the top one will become negative 4x minus 4 times 7 and minus 28 and minus 4y. Okay? And the second one, bring it down with no changes <clears throat> like that. And then add them up. The x's cancel. This is, what is this, 112? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is 7y. 
at the x's to right. We always make the fronts become opposite, so they'll drop out. Right? I'm bring it up here. So one twelve is seven y divided by seven. Is that something nice? Sixteen. Thank you. Y is sixteen. Uh, let's get x. So plug it in. Where do we plug it in? Anywhere you want. I think the easiest place would be that first equation right here. X plus 7 is Y, and Y is 16. Put it right there. X plus 7 is 16, subtract 7. X is what, 9? Which answer do they want? Do they want the 9 or do they want the 16? Nine. Yeah, how you can tell is they say how many bags of 4%. How many bags? Always, always look back on word problems. We'll see that today. Also, in the practice exam, there's a lot of word problems. There's six, seven word problems on there. So, you know, and you always remember at the end, you've got a key in your hand, but go back and, and make sure you unlock the right door, what they want. What are they asking for? How, much, how many bags of 4%? What's 4%? Well, I put X with 4%, so they want the X, nine. So there it is. That was answer A, nine bags. Is that good? Questions on that? So you're okay. Sometimes they put the number in the middle. That's what's weird on that one, huh? But it's no big deal. Just do every, just put the X and the Y in the blanks and keep right on moving. All good? All right. Well, it'll be a nice section. We're doing stuff really you already know. We're doing X squared equations. You know how to do X squared equations, right? What do you, what do, you do for solving an X squared with an equals? What's the first step when you see X squared? Uh-huh. Get a zero. Right? Get a zero. This one's already got it. Or here, let me, let me write it in. It's not, it's not very big there. 5p squared minus 20p equals 0. Yeah, that one's already got it. It's already got the 0. Step 2, you factor, right, with the parentheses. And step 3, they each, each get their own 0, huh? You know this. this so really, this is not new. They're just going to make it messier than you're usually seeing. And it's good review because... So hard can be hard problems to do. So, all right, so step one then. Step one is already done. Let me write that out for us. Step one done. We've already got the zero. So step two is factor. Now, how am I gonna how am I gonna factor? Hold on step two here. How am I gonna factor that? It's not it's not three terms, is it? It's not, you know, if they had a plus you know, four out there, something like that. If you had three terms, then I would do the two parentheses thing. Try to factor that way, the foil kind of thing, you know. But they don't. They've only got two terms, so I'm not going to do that. What am I going to do to factor then? It's not the, it's not the foil. It's just GCF, isn't it? Let's just take out what's in common there. Like, what, what are those? That's a P there in the front. What do, um, 5P squared minus 20P, what do they have in common? Go ahead and do that. Take out what's in common. Yeah, 5P, huh? 5P. Okay, and then you put inside whatever works. 5P times what? We go back to 5P squared. Just P, right? And 5P times what? would go back to minus 20P. M minus 4, huh? Good there. Just take out the GCF, because, it, again, it wasn't three terms, just two terms, just GCF. And now what do we do? That's step two. Step three is each one gets their own zero. Right? Step three. Each one gets their own zero. Why? Well, because if two things are timesed to be zero, you know either one could be zero to make them times to be zero, huh? So if they're times, so 5p could be zero, or p minus 4 could be zero. Right? With their time seem to be zero. And then you just solve each of those. So how do you do that? You divide by the five. And what is zero over five? Zero. Yeah, zero on the top is zero. This one, I'm just gonna start jumping stuff. Is it okay if I do those shortcuts? Remember when you just when you jump something to the other side of the equal side, it just switches signs. So that'll be positive four, right? So there's our two answers. How do they want them? They just want you to put a comma. Both answers. Doesn't matter what order. No parentheses needed. This isn't graphing or anything like that. Just They just want the two answers. Zero, comma, four. Or you could write four, comma, zero. Doesn't matter. There we go. Are those really the answers? I mean, like if I put in zero for P, 
there and there, would it really, like, make it true? Well, zero is obvious. Huh? Five times zero squared is zero minus 20 times zero is zero. Yeah, that, that, one's, that one kind of seems like a no-brainer. We could have guessed at that one. How about four, though? Does four work in both cases? Five times four squared, five times 16, what's that, 80? Minus 20 times four minus 80. Yep, it makes it zero. You can check it on your calculator if you want to. Four works, zero works. We're finding the answers that make the equation true. No other numbers. You, you can plug in one, doesn't work. Two, you know, nothing. 1.739, nothing else works. Only those two numbers. Good? Okay, so 10y squared plus 10y is zero. So try that one. All right, so uh, what's the GCF here? 10y, and that's times y, and that's times 1, huh? And then you said each part equal to 0? So 10y is 0, or y plus 1 is 0. And then solve for y in both cases, divide by 10. 0 over 10 is 0. Move the 1 over, negative 1. So 0 and negative 1. So two answers. We good? Those really work. I always like to check them. You don't have to check them. Not. Oh, well, when do you have to check things? Let me mention that. Because we did a lot of checking yesterday. Do you have that straight? I mean, that's a lot of the battle. Are you catching? That's a lot of the battle in math is knowing when to do what? Those little markers. So when, <coughs> when are you supposed to check? What kind of problems need to be checked? Nobody knows. Or at least they're not saying. Uh, any problem that begins with a root, right? So when you get that practice exam today, you should, like, you know, kind of get ready for the real exam. Just look through it, and any problem that has a square root, well, with an equals, I should say, root with an equal sign, then those, they just put like a C next to it, you know, and it needs to be checked. Those questions need to be checked. So those are the ones. So, so this problem did not begin with a square root or anything like that, so we don't need to check anything. We're just good right there. But, uh, but just for fun, because it will be fun, I'm going to plug in 0. Say, does it make it true? Clearly, obviously. How about the negative 1, though? Does that one make it true? Put negative 1 in both cases. What is negative 1 squared right here in this? Negative 1 squared. Positive 1 times 10 is 10. And then plus 10 times negative 1, negative 10. Beautiful. 10 minus 10, 0. See how it's working? Both those numbers and only those numbers make the equation true. All right. So uh, on this one, what is good to do is we have to get a 0, don't we? Remember, that's the first step, get a 0. So that means let's jump everything to the side where m squared is. So I'm going to grab this. And jump it that way. Does that make sense? Always jump the stuff to the side where your x squared is or your m squared. So jump it that way. And then what does that leave us? 0 is 2m squared minus 23m. It becomes a negative 23m, doesn't it? When the positive 23m jumps, it becomes negative 23m. Is that good? All right. Take it from there. Factor it, right? Mm 
Okay, so factor out an m. That's all they have in common, right? Because 2 and 23 don't have anything. So that'd be 2m minus 23. Good on the GCF there. Taking out what's in common. And then, and then you know what? We set each one to 0. So m alone is 0. That one's done. And 2m minus 23 is 0. And then, good. Solve that <laughs> second one. Bump the 23 over there. Divide by 2. 23 halves and 0. So 0 and 23 halves. There we go. Is it easy for you? It's okay? Is it confusing? Questions I can answer? Yeah, 8, okay, 8p eight squared minus 2p squared equals 6p plus 13p. Okay, so go ahead and guess gather-like terms, you know, and, and you know what you got to do. You got to jump everything to the side where p squared is. So first step, I would just subtract. Just go 6p squared, 19p, right? I mean, just add, you know, add, subtract them, add them, you know, just combine like terms. You know what you do from there, right? Jump, jump everything to the p squared side, so you get a zero. Then factor. So jump the 19p that way. Is that good? And then you've got 6p squared minus 19p is 0. When you jump it to the other side, you get a 0. Factor now. Take out what's in common, right? p. 6p minus 19. It's getting, this is getting comfortable. So you always just jump everything to the side where the x squared is, or the p squared, or the whatever squared. Which gets your zero factor, then set each one equal to zero. p is zero, or 6p minus 19 is zero. Jump this over. 6p is 19 divided by 6. So 19 sixths and zero. Are we good? Questions I can answer. Forty plus fourteen C plus C squared equals zero. So you know what to do with that one, right? Just rearrange them, and that's going to be the factoring with the two parentheses, isn't it?
So I'm going to reorder them and then factor, right, the two parentheses. So C is in the front. What, what two numbers multiply to be 40 and add to be 14? 4 and 10. 4 times 10, they multiply to be 40, they add to be 14. And then you know what? You set each one equal to 0, right? They each get their own 0. And you know that's why it's, they're just going to jump to the other side. And it's just going to be opposite sign, isn't it? Negative 4, negative 10. So the answers are negative 4, negative 10. Don't need to check them. Problem did not begin with a root. We're just good right there. That's good? Easy for you so far? Stuff we've done before, right? All good. I'm going to move on. Okay, so 3m squared is 22m minus 32. All right, try that one. So jump everything to the m squared side. Right? Jump these guys this way. Like that. Jump everything to the m squared side. Because that will be a zero. So we always jump everything to the side where m squared is. Their signs change. So we jump them over, and then it equals zero, huh? And now the factoring is a little more tricky. See if you can factor that. It's going to be the foil factory. So 3m times m. Good so far. And um, <clears throat> last times last to be 32. Was that what it is? Yeah, you're right. Good job. Let me show why it's not 4 and 8 and stuff, but good job. Good job. Yeah, so if you thought maybe it was 4 and 8, like I was thinking, it's just it's not going to work out. I'll just show some of that. If you did 4 and 8 this way, it won't work. Well, how do I know? It's all about the oi, right? The 2 inner, 2 outer. So the 2 inner, 4m, 2 outer, 3 times 8, 24. Can they make the middle? The middle is minus 22m. No way, 4 and 24 make 28. Or if you subtract them, they make 20. They can't make 22. So 4 and 8 doesn't work. What if I switch the order and put the uh, 8 here and the 4 there? It still doesn't work because it just doesn't work. I mean, the 2 inner, the 2 inner make 8M. The 2 outer make 12M. Can 12 and 8 make 22? No, they can make 20, but not 22. 
So see how it's just not working with a 4 and 8 in either order? So yeah, so what else can we do other than 4 and 8? Yeah, if you're not sure, just take your calculator. Take your 32 and divide by 2 and you get 16. You go, okay, how about 2 and 16? So you put it there and there and that won't work, but let me show it. Um, try it in that order. It's the wrong order. 2 times M is 2M. And 3 times 16 is 48. Can 2 and 48 make 22 in the middle? No. So then you go, all right, right, let me switch it. Put the 16 here and the 2 there. Here it'll finally work. The two middle ones make 16M. The two outer ones make 6M. Ah, yes. Right? So the two inner, 16 times M is 16M. 3M times 2, 3 times 2, 6. Can they make my, can 16 and 6 make 22? Yeah. Negative. So if they're both negative, if you lose 16 bucks and lose 6 bucks, you lost 22 bucks. Both negative, it works, huh? So make both these guys negative. Oops. Both these guys negative. And two negatives do multiply to be positive, 32. So it's, it's good. It's the right factor. So that's tricky factoring. Pretty tough. All right, so now, now what do we do? We take each of these, and they each get their own zero. Because if two things multiply times to be zero, either one could be zero. So jump the 16 over. Divide by 3. Boom. Jump the 2 over. 2. So there's our answer. 16 thirds and 2. <coughs> it's okay to leave the top bigger than the bottom. No problem. Is that good? Are you okay with that? Questions I can answer on that? You good with all that factoring? Can you do the oi, the inner outer, all that? All right, use up all the time in the world. We gotta take practice tests and go over them and stuff. So. Let's get it moving. So y times minus 2 plus y is minus 22. Making a mess here. Minus 22 times 2y plus 20. Right, yeah. Okay. So distribute, distribute. Distribute through there, and then they get minus 2y plus y squared equals minus 44y minus Okay, so now where are you going to jump everything on this one? Jump everything to the y squared side, right? We good? Jump everything that way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab this minus 44y and jump it over, and this minus 440 and jump it over. We good, good, good? So we'll get minus 2y plus y squared plus 44y plus 440 equals zero equals zero yeah so jump them over get a zero
All right, and then just gather like terms and put them in order and factor them. We good with all that? See how I gather the like terms there? Then factor that thing. Hmm. That's an ugly factoring. Um, try dividing it by different things. You know, like take, so if you're looking at that like I am and you're not sure, don't say the answer out loud, give everybody a chance. Take that 440 and just try dividing it by different things. So 440, try dividing it by, mm, I don't know. Is that what it is? 11, I was thinking 11 and 40, but that's, so you're saying 20, 20, 22, 22. yeah, 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 that's it, huh? Because those two can make 42 in the middle, huh? So you just got to try dividing by different things in your calculator to see how that works. How are we doing? making sense? All right, so everybody see how to do that? When you got a big old number at the back, like 440, just try dividing by different things until you get a couple of numbers that can make the middle, can make 42 in the middle. Right? Is that good? Something I can say to help there? Good. So then that goes to the parentheses, so it's y... Y, Y, uh, 20 and 22, both plus, makes 42 in the middle. They multiply to be 440 at the back. Great. And then, you know, can we just jump to it? So the answers are going to be Y equals negative 20 and negative 20. Because, you know, you're going to set them equal to zero and jump it to the other side. And you know the drill. Negative 20 and negative 22. There's our answers. Is that good? Questions on that one? Because they're going to get harder now. Are you good with that? So everybody good? So everybody understand the y squared or x squared, whatever, game plan. When you got y squared or x squared, whenever x squared or y squared shows up, jump everybody to the y squared side, which makes zero on the other side, and then factor. Right? Okay. So what do we got? 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 27 equals 1 over 18. In fact, actually, I'm going to move it over a little bit. Over x, over x plus 27, 1 over 18. Okay. So, fractions. Remember that? That was our last exam. That was exam four. This will be on the final day after tomorrow, Thursday. So, what do you do when you got a bunch of fractions? Fractions with an equal sign. How do you solve it? LCD. LCD. Top, top, top. And what is the LCD? Yeah. It's all that stuff, huh? Remember, L you shop in the LCD, you need one of each. They're, they're all different, really, you know? So, so you need, yeah, and I like putting it in that order. 18x and x plus 27, that is the good order. Let's do it like that. It, really, the order doesn't matter technically, but it's nice, easy to look at like that. So 18x, x plus 27 makes sense. So I, 
I have all three of them, the 18, the x, the x plus 27, top, top, top. Right? Isn't that how we always handle fractions? That hasn't left you right? It's only been a week. It's only been a week ago. It's been a lot of math ago, but it's only been a week ago. All right, so take it from there. That's what we do with fractions, right? LCD, top, top, top. Now cross cancel, cross cancel, multiply what's left over. Cancel the x's. <coughs> Cancel the x plus 27's. Cancel the 18's. Good to there. Right, so we cross cancel, multiply what's left over. And then distribute. Is it four eighty six? Going. Is that making sense when they got there? So 18x, 18x, 36x plus 486. All right, what do we do now? When you see x squared here, what are we going to do? We're going to yank everybody to the x squared side, right? Everybody to the x squared side. Good. Just yank everybody over there to the x squared side. And then what do we have? Zero is x squared. These two make something minus 9x. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big number. So use your calculator. So take, take that 486 and use your calculator and just start dividing by things. Try everything. Don't, don't say it out loud. Give everybody a chance. Just divide by different things until you can get two numbers that can somehow make the 9. They can subtract, maybe, to be 9 in the middle. So just start dividing, dividing, dividing with your calculator. Questions at that point? Is that making sense? That's all good.
So yeah, if you divide by 18, you'll find 27. So those are the numbers. Those are different by 9, aren't they? So that's your pair. Eighteen and twenty-seven, and the sign in the middle always goes on the bigger, right? And then that means it's actually opposite: negative eighteen, positive twenty-seven. When all is said and done, how? Huh? Because you equal zero and you jump to the other side. So there we go. Are you okay with that? That was pretty tough. Fractions. That was the last exam. You remember all that? That'll be on the final. Get prep for the final. You good with that? Might be doing on time. Okay. So I think these fraction ones are good to practice. Can I flash off of that? You got that down? And we'll get on to the practice exam. So R, I'm going to go to fresh again. I don't have enough room there. R over R minus says number what? Number 13, R over R minus 1. R over R minus 1. Plus 5 over R squared minus 1. Um, equals 11 over R plus 1. Okay, so there we go. Try that one. first? You had to factor that denominator, right? That r squared minus 1 is not factored yet. So don't forget that. If denominators need to be factored, that's top priority. Do that first. Factor that middle denominator. And then do your LCD. So that middle denominator is r plus 1, r minus 1, as you know. So now do the LCD, which is r plus 1, r minus 1, right? Top, top, top. LCD, common denominator. So R minus 1 cancels, R plus 1, R minus 1 cancel, and R plus 1 cancels. So multiply whatever's left over, which is R times R plus 1, 5, and 11 times R minus 1. We good there? Got rid of all the fractions, right? No more fractions. Multiply through by the common denominator. And then 
and distribute i squared plus r distribute 11r minus 11 So what's the game plan now? Just jump. We got to get a zero, right? Yeah. So we got to get a zero. So jump these guys over this way. So whenever you got r squared or x squared, you got to get a zero. So do that. Jump them over there. Then we have r squared plus r plus 5 minus 11r plus 11, right? They change signs when they jump over. Now, gather them up. R squared plus 1R minus 11R is minus 10R. And 5 and 11 is 16. Good. Two and eight. Both negative, right? Because that multiplies to be plus 16, adds to be negative 10. Right? The middle term comes from adding. Back term from multiplying. So then the answers are two and eight. Po both positive, huh? Because, you know, switches signs when you put them equal to zero and all that. So there we go. Is that okay? So like you guys can do these fraction ones. Questions? Are we good with all those? No troubles? No questions? And we'll take our practice exam. So, um, okay. So, 9 over y plus 4 minus 3 over y minus 2 equals 4. Do you remember what you're supposed to do about subtraction with fraction? Yeah, never subtract. Let that minus sign go to the upper right. Remember, never subtract. So let that minus sign cruise right up there. Huh. So, and then it'll become plus, and then that'll be a negative 3. Remember that? You never want to subtract. It's just really easy to mess up. So anytime you got a subtraction, move it to the upper right and add instead. Same thing. We're adding a negative. It's the same as subtraction. But that way you won't forget it. Because what happens with the LCD, because the next step, you know, is going to be all that LCD stuff. With all that mess, people tend to forget about the minuses way, way back here. Whereas when you put the minus right in your face, you won't forget it. So that's the reason for that. All right, so you know what to do next. LCD, right? Top, top, top. LCD. Okay, what's the uh, common denominator? One of each, right? So it's y plus 4y minus 2. y plus 4y minus 2. y plus 4y minus 2. Cancel. What do we have? 9y minus 2. Cancel. 
negative 3y plus 4. Now over here, we've got 4y plus 4y minus 2, don't we? Everybody good? Everybody seeing that? And good with that? No more fractions. We got rid of the fractions. Now here's the part I really want to help you with. This is the part that messes everybody. Everybody hearing me? Maybe if I've been doing the wah, 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 Charlie Brown up to now, dial in with me. Hear this. You need this. This is for you. Right here, people get confused with how to handle this. Um, they think they take the four to that one and to that one. That's wrong. I don't want to go into a long story. Just multiply the parentheses. Do the parentheses first, and you'll be good. If you let the four go to both parentheses, that's wrong. That's technically, because these are three things multiplied. You can't distribute to one parenthesis and then another parenthesis. That's over multiplied. You can't do that. It's technically wrong. So just, just do the parentheses first. That's what I would do. Just do the parentheses. Just for, let the four sit out there. Get y squared. You know, do, do the whole parentheses. Good, I'm going to go to fresh screen here. Okay. A lot of mess to this one, right? We good to there? It's a lot of multiplying. Multiplying, gathering like terms, multiplying, gathering them again. So there we go to there. Is everybody okay with that? Now, what are we going to do at this point? Yeah, the plan is to get a zero. To get a zero. So I'm going to grab this 6y and jump it over here. And this minus 30 and jump it over here. So minus 6y plus 30. Plus 8y minus 6y is plus 2y. And minus 32 plus 30 is up minus 2. Like that? <clears throat> it's a hard problem. This problem. We can't. We're almost 1140. This problem's taking forever. That was like an outside thing. I want to be done with that before then. All right, well, I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm a little tired of this problem. This goes on and on and on and on and on. Now you've got to factor out a 2. Did you notice that? They all have 2 in common. And then you've got to keep factoring from there. Now it's the 2 parentheses. It's the harder fact, FOIL factoring. 2y times y. 1 times 1. Um, uh, plus on this one, minus on that one, because that'll, because that'll work, right? That'll make the two inner minus one y, the two outer plus two y, which makes the middle plus one y. Plus one y in the middle. Does everybody see that? Are we 
good there. Does that make sense? To there. So now set each one, set all the parts equal to zero. So we have a 2 alone, a 2y minus 1, and a, and a y plus 4. So each of them equals 0. So 2 equals 0, which is meaningless. 2y1, 2y minus 1 equals 0, and y plus 1 equals 0. See how I've done all three of them? This part you can just forget. If it doesn't have a letter, 2 can't be 0. This part you jump the 1 over, 2y is positive 1. Divide by 2, it's a half. This one, jump it over, negative 1. So the answers are negative 1 and a half. That's a lot of work. That's a hard problem. Is that okay on that? Questions I can answer? Well, I'll just leave it up there. I am going to... <coughs>